Kyle Beckerman, team captain, midfielder for RSL, Real Salt Lake. Thank you so much for being part of Three Questions. Thanks for having me. Nice haircut, by the way. Thank you. You cut your dreadlocks a little while ago. Tell us why that happened. I mean, they were iconic. Why did you wind up cutting them off? There was, there's not really a whole big story around it. I uh, woke up after last year's, uh, the last game of the season, and my wife and I, we just started cutting. And next thing you know, about three quarters were off, and there was no going back after that. Americans are really starting to take to professional soccer, but they are way behind the world. How tough is it to wait for American fans to catch up with the rest of the world when it comes to professional soccer? Yeah, it's just taking time because we have so many sports. And, uh, you know, we go from one sport, the season ends, and we got another team. And, um, but soccer's coming, and there's no stopping it. And uh, really with all these new soccer stadiums, uh, every new city seems to want an uh, MLS team. Um, and just to see, you know, where it's come and now to where it is and where it's going to go, um, it's just a matter of time. But the fans are getting it. Um, they're, they're showing up to the stadiums. They're watching it more on TV. There's way more uh, soccer on TV now than there ever has been. So I think the addition of all those things, it's just going to keep building and building. And uh, at some time soon, we'll be up there with the uh, you know, football, basketball. If you had to draw the differences between a football fan, American football, mm -hmm. and a soccer fan, what would you say they, they are? Oh, man. Um, I think there's a lot of similarities. Um, just like in one football stadium or in one soccer, you're going to have an area, and some areas are maybe more family friendly than others, and, uh, and it's the same thing in soccer. Um, you're going to have your rowdy fans in areas, and you're going to have your family friendly uh, sections. But what the biggest thing is that they both have is the passion. The, these fans are passionate about their teams, and they really care about results. And uh, so I would say there's a lot more similarities than differences. You were born and raised in Maryland, the son of school teachers back there. How badly did you want to play soccer growing up? That was it. That was all I wanted. Um, I, I was, my parents were able to take me to a couple uh, U.S. national team games in the Washington, D.C. area. I was able to watch some indoor soccer, what we had at the time. And once I saw that and I knew that's what I wanted to do. And luckily I was good about I was good at the sport and I didn't have any problem with working hard to go achieve something. So um, unfortunately, my my studies, I wasn't really focused. It was mainly soccer, soccer, soccer. Um, and now we're kind of going backwards and soccer's good in a good spot. But now I'm going to go. I keep I'm trying to read all the books I can now to catch up from what I missed out on. Now, your brother, as I understand, is the wrestling coach. Mm -hmm. Your older brother yep. is the wrestling coach at Brown University. And I understand also that you were a state champion wrestler at <laughs> one point. Is that correct? That's true. Okay. So when the time came for you to make that decision between wrestling or soccer, mm -hmm. how tough was that decision and what went into it? Well... For me, it was pretty easy. Soccer is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a professional. I didn't know what that meant, but I wanted to be it. And there actually came a time where there was, you know, the, both sports were coming and they were going to collide. And I think I was in the semifinals of a, a state tournament, and it was a, or either that or I had to go and leave the tournament to go try out for a soccer team. And it was in my mind, I'm out. I'm going to soccer. My mom took me. My dad said, what are you doing? You're in the semifinals of the tournament. But <laughs> it was in my mind. I was set ready. Uh, and that was kind of the first time where it kind of split, where I took sides. And was that in high school? or This was, was in it? middle school. Middle school. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of the start of it. And then um, it just continued there to kind of separate from wrestling. Now, growing up, you were a part of the Bradenton Soccer Academy, and then uh, now with the Zions Bank Real Academy mm -hmm. going, uh, how important is a soccer academy to young players coming up who want to play professionally, and what does it ultimately mean to the fans? Well, that's a good question, and it's, uh, for us, it was our way our national team was it was our way to get on the same level as these other countries because these other countries already had these academies with their club teams so what we didn't have the club teams and the MLS wasn't as established as it is so they said okay how do we keep them at the same level so they put us down in Florida we lived together and it was the best we possibly could get in training and the way the studies were and um, so now they've 
now gone through a process of that, but now every MLS team has these academies. And we're one of the only few that actually has the kids live together, go to school together. And so we kind of have an advantage in, in, in our club, which is great. And you see we already have about five, six guys that are in with our team and starting and, and big, impactful players for us. And that all stemmed from them getting this professional environment at 15, 16, 17. So now when they come up to Real Salt Lake and they come to our preseason and they start playing with us, it's not a big deal because they're used to that professional environment. So that's kind of where it started, us in Bradenton. And now where it is now is you got these places like uh, what we have in Harriman. And what does all of this mean to the fans? For the fans, it just means you're going to have some homegrown players, which is great. You're going to have guys that grew up rooting for Real Salt Lake, and they live in the area, and now they have a chance to see their heroes, and then they, become, they get to become one. And that'll be so cool to see, you know, fans that this kid, we've seen him when he was playing, and he was this, you know, he was a really short kid, and now look at him, he's playing at Rio Tinto. So th for the fans, it's going to be huge. It's going to be awesome to see, you know, local kids playing for Real Salt Lake. It, it seems as if with the academy in place now, uh, Real Salt Lake truly is building an empire or a dynasty. Mm -hmm. Is that the feel that you get? It, it's, uh, well, we got a leg up. Like I said, we have one of the few that actually live together. And so we can piggyback, you know, we have the local kids, but we also have kids from San Diego uh, who don't want to go up to the Galaxy or F, uh, LAFC because it's too far, so they come out here. Um, so it's a way to really kind of keep that bloodline coming through. And so as soon as, you know, you're always going to have a new kid coming up. That's, uh, and so it, it'll be just great for the team. Earlier in your career, or early in your career, you were playing for Miami, and you didn't really see much playing time mm -hmm. there. But then you were tra uh, traded to Colorado, mm -hmm. and in your second season there, you really started to contribute, got mm. a lot more playing time, contributed to the success of that team. What was it that happened that turned the key for you there in Colorado that made you such a leader there and then subsequently had you become a leader here in Salt Lake? Well, I think sometimes it just takes time. And, um, you know, I got down to Miami and um, the team was a, uh, was a bit more uh, veteran oriented. The coach, you know, at that time, he's, he has to win right now. He doesn't have time to see an 18 year old grow and become good. So I just put my, uh, put my head down. I worked as hard as I could. I tried to soak up as much as I could from the older guys, see what they did good, see what they did bad. And then I knew when I did get my chance, I was going to run with it. And so when I got to Colorado, I got a little bit, some more minutes. And then that second year, you know, some of it's luck. You know, I think there was a couple of players they brought in that didn't work out. And I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> and so as soon as I got in there, I, I just really wanted to, you know, just hold on to that spot and, and become a player that the coach, when he goes to put his 11 starters, that I'm one of the first names he puts on the list and just keep working on that. And then uh, you gain responsibility as you get older. There is a perfect storm that comes about in a professional athlete's career where their preparation, their talent, their work ethic all starts to come together. Did you recognize that in Colorado? And what did that feel like for you when you realized that the stars were truly aligning for you? Yeah, I think what happens uh, as, you, as you get older and you get more games under your belt, I think it, the responsibility, uh, you, you take on more responsibility. So at, at the younger age, I'm only thinking of myself and how am I, am I gonna be ready? How am I gonna play? How did I play? And then as it gets older and I get more responsibility and I take on that, I now started to look, what is my team? How's my team? Are they ready? Are the young guys, are, are they going to be ready to play? And, and what can I do to help the team? And then you think of yourself, all right, I know I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be ready. And so that's kind of what happened. You kind of build into it that as you get older and you get more games, you have to take on more responsibility. And it's up to, you know, it's not just about your game. It's about what are you going to do to impact the whole team? So I just kind of continue with that. Now, the difference between real champions and everyone else is talent, work ethic, and attention to detail. Mm. In soccer, what does that look like? What does the talent and the work ethic and the attention to detail look like 
before you ever get to the playing field or to the stadium? Well, yeah, it's huge. I mean, a big part of it is the effort you put out and uh, reactions because soccer is a game of mistakes. There's going to be mistakes in the game, and it's what do you do when that happens? And now if you have, um, you know, and so if you can, can instill that in practice every day, the reactions and, the, and the, the extra work you're doing off the field, and, and, you know, when practice is done, do you go and work on some shooting or you go work on something in your position? Um, all those little things. And if you continue to do the, the right things every day and every day and every day, now when you get to the game, it's just second nature. And those reactions when you make a mistake are the same for every single one. And, and your guys are always trying to you know, get to the same goal, you know, not just scoring, but in, in a big sense of this is where we want to go. We want to be champions. So we got to put that every day. And then the games will come out and we'll get it done. And then ultimately the bigger goal will, will work out for us. What is more valuable, talent or work ethic? Hmm. <laughs> it's a good one. I mean, I, I got to say you have to have both. But I think, you know, because you, you could be the most talented player in the world, but if you don't have that work ethic, you're, 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 it's just not going to happen. But again, if you just work all, you know, you, you work hard and you don't have any talent, you might have some problems too. So I'm going to say you have to have both. Mm. Now, you've had your fair share of yellow and red cards. Mm -hmm. A couple over of them. Your, yeah. <laughs> over your career. What it, is there a strategy that a team goes through? I mean, because yellow cards and red cards are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Is there an overall strategy in soccer that a team tries to accomplish using that the yellow and red cards? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we'll be in a game, let's say, and uh, let's say one of their defenders gets a yellow card early, early in the game. Well, we might be at halftime. Hey, guys go at this guy, just like a guy in basketball who's, got, who's sitting on four fouls or five fouls. It's the same idea. Let's get after that guy because we know the next time he fouls, it's going to be a second yellow or a red. Um, so you, use, you definitely use some, you know, there's some tactics in there. Um, on the other hand, sometimes you got to take a yellow. Sometimes, you know, it might be breaking. You know if you're going to foul, you know the yellow is coming, but it's for the good of the team. Everybody gets behind. Our defense, we're okay. We're not nothing's going to happen except for the yellow card. So a little bit of both. Obviously, you never want any red cards, but they happen. Uh, you just got to move on. Do you ever feel like, uh, as the leader of the team, the team captain, almost a lightning rod, do you feel like they go after you, they target you to try to get you to... Uh, get yellow cards? Yeah. Well, I think it's part of the position. Um, it's a, uh, My position's a lot in that transition mode. And so... If we're in a bad transition, it could be our team could be in trouble. There could be numbers coming at us. Maybe a little quick foul. It just makes sense. It's the right thing to do for our team. Um, a lot of times, I'm right near the referee, so we might have conversations where I don't think I think we should have seen the same thing, but we seem seem to be on the totally different side. <laughs> um, but no, I, I mean I try not to. If I could go a whole season without getting it one. I would, but it's just its not happening. Well, and soccer is such an emotional game, it too. Is. I mean, it doesn't help to have the fans screaming yeah. at the top of their lungs. No, it's a good point you say. I mean, it is very emotional, and a lot of the times, you know, we don't see it when you're watching, but everybody, we're breathing hard, we're tired, we're, we're our blood's pumping, and when you, you know, anything you try and do, when your blood's pumping, you're a little tired, you're a little cranky. And, you know, things don't go your way, you're a little bit more cranky. So there's definitely that, that edge to it that, you know, we're all kind of tired and we're kind of a little sensitive because we're, we're, we're tired out there. And so that's when, you know, yellow cards happen or bad tackles. And um, it's a way you got to control. It's for sure you got to control it and, and uh, try and do the right thing. You've had a very impressive international career as well as domestic. Where do you get more satisfaction, playing on the international stage or playing before the hometown crowd in Salt Lake? I like, I mean, they're both, they're both amazing because the way I look at it, when I was playing international, I'm representing Real Salt Lake. I'm representing our state here and that we got a guy on the national team and he's rep repping us. Um, and that's a really fun thing, especially to get to play with the U.S. team at the Rio Tinto. That was something really special that I got to do a couple times. Um, but they're, they're both huge. I think 
for me, the way I look at it with Real Salt Lake is I feel like we're always punching above our weight and we're trying to get respect. And, and you know, they look at us as a small market team and I, and I want them, you know, I don't want them to look at us as, small, as a small market. I want to look at, well, they're good. That team in Utah is a good team. It doesn't matter if you're big or small. So I think we're always kind of fighting for respect here, um, which when we get on a roll and we're a good team, that brings a lot of pride to me. Um, but the international, of course, is, you know, it's a, a stage that's a, a level above. And so if you can get some guys there and, and just be on that stage is really neat for both club and the country. You've played professional soccer for, what, 18, 19 years now, 11 years here in Salt Lake. Where do you want to go? What do you see yourself doing? How long do you want to keep playing? Well, I got uh, the contracts for sure next year, so I'm um, excited to come back. Um, hopefully we can finish off this season. Um, you never know, going all the way. I'm not giving up hope. Um, and then uh, just reevaluate after next year. Um, but I, I love it here, and um, I see myself living here for forever, so um, I'm not going anywhere soon. But as far as playing soccer, I mean, after next year, I mean, are you getting tired? Are you feeling your age? Um, I, I mean, I think there's days I feel worse than others. Some, some games, you it takes a couple of extra days to recover. Um, but I feel pretty good. I think uh, tires still got some tread on it. And um, I'm having fun, which is the most important thing. I love every day going to practice, um, training with the guys. I love getting ready. I love getting that anxiousness before a game. Um, so, you know, as long as those things are still in there and the body's feeling good, I'll continue. If they still want me, I'll, I'll keep coming back. Are you happy with where the team is right now in the season? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's been a huge year. We've got, we've got a bunch of guys, a ton of experience. Um, we're really starting to build a foundation uh, for something to build on. I mean, we, I think, had five, six guys that had breakout years this year. Um, playing their most games kind of like I did in Colorado that year where we have about five six of those guys and um, Really starting to you see that they're taking on that more responsibility and realizing that you know This is I have to be an impact to the game because we're relying on these guys and they've every single one of them has stepped up to the challenge um, Which has been great to see they've got improved as the season went on so I think um, you know we can we can really start to build something and continue punching above our weight class and we're just a gritty group of young bucks and we got a couple old guys and um, you know we're just gonna we can guarantee we're gonna give everything we got every game and um, you know if we can continue and keep keep gelling together it, it's uh, it's only the sky's the limit finally if you could speak directly to the fans and give them a message from the team captain Kyle Beckerman midfielder for Real Salt Lake what would that message be thank you I mean, there's nothing better in, in, in my life um, than when I send, than in our team, than when we send them home happy. And that's, you know, when all goes to plan. We have a home game and we come out, we play well, um, we dominate the other team, we win the game. Nobody's holding their breath at the end of the game. We're, we've already won, the game's almost over, but it doesn't matter. We got the game in hand and they go home happy. And that's, that's a, uh, that's what, what it's about, but um, we, we mainly it's just thank you. These guys, I mean, they come out in the rain, they come in the lightning, snow. We had a couple games in snow, and um, when times are tough, they're still there. And when we're good and everything's going good, they're there as well. So um, we just appreciate these fans. They they really uh, support us. They they got our backs. And um, main thing, when we lose, it's not planned. We don't try. We try and win every game, and. Uh, the main thing is I hope they know we're giving everything we got every game. Mm. Well, Kyle Beckerman, team captain, midfielder for Real Salt Lake, thank you yeah. so much for being you part bet. of Three Questions. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.